Today I am going to show you how to make a Gen 5 LT that has been canned, idle properly, and I'm going to show you the proper tuning steps as well. I'm not going to show you like a full tune or anything. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole process of tuning one, but I'm going to show you the steps of it. And this is how I do it. Um, these engines are very much torque based, so you need you need to adjust some virtual torque cables, which we will get to in a second. And they are very VVE based too, so you need to definitely adjust these later. So this is a bone stock tune right here, and you can see that I had this is the as found of it, and then the comparison file is the final. It says V1.0, but it's the final version of it. Uh, essentially, I'm still messing with it a little bit. I need to do some water and oil stuff, but that's uh, that's for a later video. The first thing uh, I would do, or I do, is mess with idle. Go to your base set point, and on this one, even though it's a stage one uh, cam, it did not want to idle. I had to bump it up by 100 RPM across the board. Go to your rolling moving idle and do the same thing as well. Bump it up by 100. Now, if it doesn't want to start right there, um, you need to go over here and bump this one up by 100 as well. And go to your, um, I'm sorry, in gear and bump it up by 100 as well. This is just for a stage one. For stage two, I would go to 200 on all of these. I, I would bump them up by 200 RPM. I didn't have to mess with any adaptive idle stuff. That stuff's pretty aggressive from the factory. So you shouldn't really have to mess with this too much, even on a stage two cam. Torque wise, you need to mess with these. Uh, speed control reserve. Um, on the, in the book, it tells you to select this table right here, go down to about right here, and then scroll all the way over and then bump it up by five pound feet. This kind of worked, um, and it also tells you to smooth this over right here after you're done and smooth this right here. I had to add quite a bit to it, so I had to add over 12 in some spot, or about 12 in some spots, and then smooth it over to get it to idle good. Uh, torque limit offset goes from 69 to 100, so change that. And then the external load, this was a big one too that the book kind of misguided you on too. It told you to start off with just a 50 pound feet increment, and which is okay. Um, if I would have known what I know now, I probably would have started off with 100. <laughs> because you can see here, I had to add quite a bit. I had to go 200 and a lot of spots and then 100 right here to make it idle good. This actually made it fire right up with zero issues and it kind of dipped a little bit. And so on that note, we went over to the spark table and went to a minimum spark base. If you can see here, there is a ton of negative timing here. And here at idle as well, there's some negative timing here too. Oh, we don't want that in the cam to vehicle. Uh, we need positive. Think positive here. So I had to add 10 right here. So you can see how much I added, what the difference was. So put it at positive 5, positive 5, and then positive 5 right here. And then all I did was smooth it out right here. And then copied this entire table, control C after it was done, and then control v it right here to long term, so control v is paste, if you don't know what that is. And then it was ready to start. It actually started right up and idled very good. And then we got the tuning. So immediately I noticed the torque tables were way off. So I had to go over here to virtual torque. And right here, uh, you have a drop down menu here. Okay, so ignore the DOD ones. We're not going to be using those. So this vehicle, I had to do these four. So air mass, map, E85 air mass, and then E85 map. 
and I'm going to do these the same way as well. Now you can go in here and change a bunch of stuff. Like you can make the minimum spark five, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20. I just leave them alone as stock. I don't mess with any of this stuff. I don't mess with the angles or the Y axis or the, I don't, I know there's some guys that will do that stuff. I don't do it. It is, it, uh, no, we're not doing that. We're going to keep it simple. So to start off with a cam vehicle, I go in here and I choose these negative tables right here. And then 1.1 times it. I'm going to select 500 and go down 1.1 again. That's 10%. We're going to extrapolate coefficients. Changes the entire tables. We're going to calculate the torque tables. Boom. We are done with the air mass. Go down to your map. Choose these negative ones. So I'm going to go about that 30 right there. Actually, on these, you can probably just do this right here. Just select the entire table and then times it by 10. Extrapolate. Calculate. Done. Repeat the process for these. We are done with the torque tables for right now. Now, you will need to data log the torque tables. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do all that stuff. You're just going to have to figure it out. Uh, that's for a whole nother video. I can go, I can make a whole nother video for histograms and all that stuff. So now these, I said these engines are very VVE based. Uh, on previous generations, you would start off in speed density. Uh, on this one, you do not want to start off in speed density. It's probably not going to be anywhere remotely correct. I would start off in mass airflow sensor only. So to do that, we're going to change the dynamic airflow to 150. We're going to turn off a DEFCO. Completely. We're going to turn off catalyst protection. And then you can leave the power enrichment alone. This one's at 90, which that's fine. Uh, if you already haven't done so, disable the OD. And then we're going to go. That's it. So you don't need it. You, to, for a cam vehicle, you probably want to turn this off too. Uh, I turn this off down here and then leave it alone up here. If it's just a basic little bitty cam. If it's a big cam, I'm turning it completely off. Like I don't, I don't pay attention to misfire codes on this stuff because it's just throw, it's just going to throw false misfire codes. So, and that is it. So we're going to go ahead and tune in math only mode. We're going to go set up our histograms for the math calibration. Um, data log it, various RPMs and loads, no wide open throttle stuff. And we're going to dial it in until it's about 2% at the max. You know, I don't, if it's five here and there, I don't really care about that. That's your split of pairs after that. After you got your math calibration done, now we can go to speed density mode. And this is where it gets tricky. I'm going to put it in speed density here. So I'm going to put the high RPM disable at 8,000, high RPM re enable at 7,999. I'm going to fail the math, so I usually do this, two, and then one, so it fails. Go to your DTC list, scroll down to P101, 102, and 103. I'm going to fail them on the first error. So mill on the first error, mill on the first error, mill on the first error. Save it, flash it. Now, it is probably not going to run good. If it doesn't, just stop the vehicle immediately. Come over here to your BCM editor. Go to Edit Virtual Torque or Virtual Volumetric Efficiency Table. So we're probably going to take some fuel out of idle. That's probably what I would do first. So go to I don't know 400 RPM at right here, and then go to about 1600. And then probably take out 
Let's take out like uh, 15%. Now, VVE tables are pretty rough. Um, even after you calculate the coefficients and stuff, they're still going to be jagged in some spots. So like this right here is pretty unacceptable. This is acceptable. This is fine. This is not too terrible, but this right here is going to be terrible. So to fix this, what I like doing, let's go over here, just smooth it out. Click it a couple times. It'd be all right. It's not going to hurt anything. And then we're going to select the whole thing, calculate the coefficients. It'll work itself out. So that'll probably get it started and actually idling good. And then you can adjust from there. And then you're going to be data logging and just filling up tables and doing all that stuff. So before you flash it, though, copy this whole table right here and then paste it over to the manifold switch open. Click calculate coefficients. And so they both match. Boom. Done. Flash it. Log it and rinse and repeat. So that should get you started on idle stuff. Um, after, you know, after you're done with uh, logging it and all that stuff, just put it back to normal. It should be blended from the factory. Just like that, it'll run just fine. Now I am sure there are other ways to skin a cat here or tune it. Um, I know on Gen 4 stuff, you can actually uh, tune both the uh, speed density and the mass airflow sensor tables or VVE and uh, mass airflow sensor tables together. Um, I'm not sure on a Gen 5, but on a Gen 5, I just took this approach and it works very well. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave one down below. Uh, that'll be it for this one. Thanks, guys.